close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Notice where the breathing feels most prominent, where you can tell that now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out, and try to make it comfortable. Don't tighten up around the breath. And you can experiment with different kinds of breathing to see what feels best for the body right now. You can try in long, out short, in short, out long, heavy, light, fast, slow, deep, shallow. See what kind of rhythm and texture of breathing feels good for the body right now. If you're feeling tired, what kind of breathing will give you more energy? If you're feeling tense, what kind of breathing will relax you? After all, it is your breath. Nobody can force you to breathe in an uncomfortable way, and yet all too often we just let it happen on its own without paying much attention to it. We think that other things are more important. Let the breath take care of itself. Unfortunately, we do breathe without having to pay attention to it, but it means we're not getting the most out of the breath. So right now you don't have anything else to do. Your only responsibility is to see how the breath can be good for the body. Because when the breath flows well, that's good for all the different organs in the body. It is the force of life. And the force of life doesn't feel good right now, something's wrong. So you can adjust things so it does feel good, does feel nourishing. You pay attention to what, what's happening with the breath right now, you can learn a lot about it. If your attention is off someplace else, the breath will still come in, still go out, but you're not going to get the most out of it. So pay attention right now. And this is a good exercise to do every day. It's like checking up on the body, checking up in your mind, where are things in the body, where are things in the mind. If the mind pulls away, you have an idea, well, where is the mind going? If the mind doesn't have a clear place to stay, it wanders all over the place without you, having, without you being able to track it down. Where did it go today? It's kind of hard to say. Well, jump from here, jump from there. It's like a person jumping trains. You jump from this train, jump to that train, and all of a sudden you find yourself in some place you never thought you'd go. But if you have a clear place to stay, then when the mind moves, you know. It's like looking up at the clouds in the sky. If you're lying on your back out in the meadow, and you look up and there's nothing else but you and the clouds in the sky, you have no idea how fast the clouds are going or which ones are moving which ones are not. Because there's no clear point of comparison. But when you have something like a top of a telephone pole or a top of a tree or the top of a house, you can watch that. You can say, oh, these are the clouds that are staying still, these are the clouds that are moving. In the same way, you get to know the movements of your mind because you give it a single place to stay. And then watch out for it if it's going to wander away from that. And ask yourself, is it going in a good direction or a bad direction? For right now, you don't want it to go in any direction at all. You want to stay right here. But as you go through the day, you can make this your point of comparison. How does the breath feel in the body right now? And if the mind is going to move, is it moving in a good direction? Okay, you can go with it. If it's not moving in a good direction, you can tell it to stop. This puts you more in control. After all, if you can't control your own mind, what can you control? So learn how to exert some control over the mind. And you'll find that you get more control over the rest of your life as well.